Well, North Carolina saw a 7.5% increase in vehicle crashes from 2020 to 2021. More than 1,700 people died in the last year. Preliminary data from the National Safety Council shows that North Carolina is on track to see even more traffic crash deaths this year. So far, 703 people have died compared to 687 last year, 547 people in 2020. So what we're doing is we're digging into traffic safety. When is it the most dangerous to drive and looking at how safe your car is, giving you more context to the headlines. During the pandemic, law enforcement saw more instances of drunk driving. New data shows that we're continuing to move in the wrong direction with those stats. Deborah Alfaron has more on the government's latest numbers. A teenage girl died in Texas this month when a pickup truck plowed into her home. Police say the driver was drunk. Justice for Bailey! In Michigan, a driver was charged with killing college student Bailey Broderick while under the influence. She was sunshine and amazing. She was just amazing. Traffic deaths are on the rise for the third straight year. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration estimates more than 9,500 people died in crashes in the first quarter of this year alone. That's about 7% more than the same period last year and the highest number in two decades. About a third of all crashes are consistently due to driving while impaired. Almost everyone knows of someone killed in an impaired driving crash. Administrator Stephen Cliff says the trend worsened in the first year of the pandemic when more than 11,000 Americans died because of impaired driving, equivalent to the population of the entire city of Cocoa Beach, Florida. When everyday life came to a halt in March 2020, Risky behaviors skyrocketed and traffic fatalities spiked. We had hoped these trends were limited to 2020, but sadly, they aren't. Starting now through Labor Day, safety officials are launching their annual Drive Sober campaign and increasing law enforcement to try and cut down on impaired driving. Megan Carter lost her twin brother in a drunk driving crash when they were 19. Jonathan's life was stolen that evening. My parents were robbed of their son. Now with Mothers Against Drunk Driving, she's working to create a future with no more victims. The North Carolina State Highway Patrol, Mothers Against Drunk Driving and the Wildlife Resource Commission are all working together for their Labor Day public safety campaign. Now this is what they'll be doing. They'll be increasing enforcement during the on the road, on the water, don't drink and drive campaign over that holiday weekend. The State Department of Transportation says last year alone there were more than 1900 vehicle crashes over that Labor Day weekend and 23 people died. It's not the holiday though with the most accidents. DOT says Thanksgiving comes in at number one. Now, over the last five years, there was an average of about 2,800 crashes over that holiday weekend for Thanksgiving. Now, when it comes to crashes, how well does what you drive protect you? That's the question we're asking. Well, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety tested cars against a taller, heavier barrier. So what we're saying is that the testing was meant to simulate trucks and SUVs and the things that you could run into on the road. Now, some of the United States most popular cars did not fare well in this testing. Mid-sized cars struggled against the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety's tougher side crash tests. The Institute put seven popular passenger cars to the test, which is now a 4,200 pound barrier. It strikes the driver's side at 37 miles per hour. Part of our redesign of the barrier was to uh, emulate the pickup trucks and the large SUVs that are out there in the real world that are the striking vehicles in many of these crashes. In this test group, only the Subaru Outback earned a good rating. Three cars received poor ratings. Structure was particularly compromised on two of those models, and in all three, there was likelihood of injury. Either one or both of the female dummies' heads slipped below the uh, side curtain airbag and struck the window sill. The IIHS says one reason for the group's disappointing performance is the lower ride height. President David Harkey is confident automakers will respond. All of these vehicles had good ratings in our original side tests. I have no doubt that they will get to a point that they will get them back to having a good rating in our updated side tests. The Institute plans to test smaller passenger cars and smaller pickup trucks to see how well they protect passengers. 
You know, it's one thing when you're the one driving the car. It's quite another when your teenager is the one behind the wheel. Research shows teens are three times more likely to be involved in a fatal accident compared to older drivers. Experts say parents really need to consider the right kind of car for younger drivers. Usually that's one with more safety features. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety and Consumer Reports created a list of recommended vehicles for teens. There are 70 used and new cars on this list, ranging anywhere from $6,000 all the way up to brand new of $39,000. All the cars performed well during crash tests, have high reliability scores, and can break from 60 miles per hour to zero and 145 feet or less. Now, some of the cars on the list include the Mazda 3, the Chevy Trailblazer, and the Honda CRV, Subaru Outback, and the Toyota Highlander. You can find the full list on our website. Just search Cars for Teens. A week from Monday, get ready to slow down because school and school zones, they are going to be back in full force. High Point Police are increasing their presence outside schools within city limits. They're enforcing the speed limit in school zones. Drivers who are stopped for speeding should expect a $250 fine plus court costs and another safety reminder. You have to stop for a stopped school bus. All right, coming up, we're going to take a look at how inflation is impacting the price of school supplies.